Hey guys, Jonathan Dollison here from iMore, and we're checking out Sorcery Part 3 with John and Joseph uh, from Inkle. How's it going, guys? Hey. Yeah, great, yeah. Yeah, so uh, what, do you got, what do you got here for us? Okay, so um, if you haven't played a sorcery game before, this is Part 3. You can start from here or go back and play the whole series, and uh, I'm going to take you through it. So, sorcery is an epic adventure across a fantasy land of traps, monsters, and magic. And it's played out on this... We've got a pretty unique style. It's played out on this hand-drawn map. As you can see, it's got a range of different terrains. There's a forest, there's a desert, there are some mountains. The mountains are rendered in 3D, so you can scroll around, so it's a nice little effect there. And this is the land you're going to be crossing as you try to get all the way from the city of Kare to uh, the Zaman Road. This is part three of the adventure. If you pick it up... Uh, if you've not played the previous ones and you just pick this one up, the plot will make sense to you. It'll adapt itself so you can tell what's going on, otherwise you'll be continuing your character. Oh, nice. So I'm, I'm going to show you how it works, because it's a bit different than, than most games. Uh, so here's my guy, there he is, and he's standing at the bottom of his tower. Now, everything that happens in the world of sorcery is narrated to you in text. Okay. So the game writes the story of your adventure as you go along, and it gives you choices. So here I've just uh, left the road and approached a tower. Um, we're just coming. The moon is rising because it's night time at the moment. Uh -huh. and I'm going to look up at the tower, and if you read that, I'm going to find that there's some ivy up that tower, and that's going to let me, let me climb up to the top. And so I can explore up onto this tower, and the story continues to narrate. And the idea is that as you make your way around the world, you can investigate anywhere and I'm going to show you what I mean by that using our little rewind feature so if I rewind back to the road because this is a this is a branching narrative you can go anywhere you can yeah. make lots of choices and you can die uh -huh. this is a dangerous world it's full of traps it's full of monsters is it permadeath uh, no it's okay. kind of the opposite it's okay. totally in permadeath okay. so if you die then you can rewind at any time uh -huh. and try and explore a different way okay. and go a different way. So I'm going to just rewind a bit to show you so Something because else. it's based on um, a game book series uh, from the 80s, it's kind of recreating that sensation that you did when you were a kid, when you, when you turned to page 256 and then you yeah. found that it killed you and then you, you, you still kept your finger in the page from, yeah, yeah, from yeah, a yeah. previous choice and so you go back again. Right. But uh, the, as Joe says, it's adapted from a game book, but it's really not a lot like a game book anymore and I'm, I'm just going to show you why not. This is a new feature in Sorcery 3, that when you're anywhere on the map, then when you finish your bit of story there, you can go to anywhere else that's nearby. So that means this isn't a game book. This is an open world game. You can go from anywhere to anywhere. You can explore the map in any order, and the story will write itself around your choices. Oh, nice. So um, uh, I'm just going to show you, show you that. So this is me going to the tower. So I'm, I'm going back to that tower. You remember I rewound before? Mm -hmm. uh, and let's climb to the top this time. So I'll look up at the tower, find my ivy again, we'll climb my way up. And I'm going to show you one of the big new mechanics in, uh, in Sorcery 3. So, as you can tell, my, my guy is an adventurer. Uh, you can play as a male or a female. And he's got a sword. There's a combat system. There's also a spell casting system. Um, I'm not, maybe not going to show you either of those things today, actually. If you want to see them, you should check out the I'm More video we did for Sorcery 3 a couple of years ago. Sorcery, the first Sorcery. Sorry, yeah. Cast. Thank you for Sorcery 1. <laughs> um, it's been a long old GDC. Uh. Uh, but I think this will be pretty worth it because I've just played around with this contraption on top of the tower and I've turned it on and it's, uh, it's a lighthouse there are six of these lighthouses in the game but um, it's not actually a lighthouse of light it's a lighthouse of time and where that beam shines that's the same land a thousand years in the past so you can see here there's a hut that's just been revealed you can mm -hmm. walk to that hut because it's an open world you can go inside you can meet someone there you can talk to them you can find out all about them okay. this is a world full of stories but uh, the great thing is the lighthouse, you can point wherever you like. So what's happening here is that there's actually two completely different times. There's the present time, which is kind of a wasteland, and there's the ancient time, which is when the land was more at peace and there were lush fields and trees, and it was really green. And by focusing this lighthouse on different parts of the map, we're kind of looking back into that time. So we can position the lighthouse, and then by rotating it and pointing it in different directions, we can go and explore what, the, what was in that area uh, a thousand years ago. So we can use that to solve puzzles, Dude, like this broken awesome. bridge here, which we can point the tower at, and then we can go across the river. But we can also use it to uh, make discoveries. So, for example, here there's a cave. In the cave are the bones of uh, someone who lived there. You can point the tower at it, you can go and meet them. The map has six towers on it, 
you, the themes can intersect. You can find any, you can point them in any old direction. You can make your own way across the land and change the shape of it, and the story will adapt and narrate itself around everything that you do. Awesome. And that is Sorcery 3. And this is coming to what mobile platforms? So this is for, this is an iPad, obviously, but it's also going to be out on iPhone, and we're also doing a simultaneous launch on Android tablets and, and phones as well. And when is that launch? Uh, we don't have an exact date yet, but okay. we're looking at middle of April. But if people want to keep track of this game, they should come to our website. There's a mailing list you can sign up to. Or if you haven't played Sorcery yet, you better get started on Parts 1 and 2. You've got some definitely, time. And, and once you've played Sorcery Part 2, you can use a cloud save from Sorcery Part 2 to continue on into Sorcery 3 and continue your progress. And you can even do that across devices between Android and iOS. Oh, that's like. really cool. Yeah, because this is a story all about making not just big choices, but every choice in the story. Every little decision, every big decision, and every single one of those choices is remembered. And to just give you a sense of the, the scale of that, um, this particular episode contains 12,000 choices in it. Oh, nice. You won't have to choose all of them. Yeah. Depends which way you go. Uh, but everything you do shapes the character, shapes the world, shapes your own adventure. So it really is, it really is something quite different from, uh, from most game books. And that's Sorcery 3. All right. Uh, coming uh, very soon. Thank you guys for your time. Uh, all right, guys, Jonathan from iMore. You guys enjoy. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. much.